the example of PHP and PHV. In an experiment with the bacteria Alkaligens eutrophus, it was shown that bacteria growing on substrate with 100% of butyric acid, only PHB was produced. And bacteria of the same species produced only PHV when growing on substrates with 100% valeric acid. The extracted PHP polymer exhibited brittleness, while the extracted PHV polymer appeared to be more elastic and softer. Also, PHB had a much higher melting point than PHV. So, the carbon source influences the PHA being formed. But it gets even more interesting. Bacteria are also able to make copolymers. Alkaligens eutrophus was also grown on substrates with both butyric and phaleric acid. For instance, 60% butyric and 40% phaleric acid. The formed PHA had a melting point of 133 degrees Celsius. Turns out, the PHA synthase enzyme easily polymerizes 3-hydroxybutyryl coenzyme with 3-hydroxyphaleryl coenzyme <coughs> forming a copolymer of PHD and PHV together called polyhydroxybutyrate cohydroxyphalerate or in short PHB CoHV Depending on the amount of PHB and PHV in this copolymer it has different melting points, flexibility, softness and so on. Meaning that by changing the carbon source you can change the traits of your polymer and in that way create bioplastics with different structures, properties and applications. Now this was a very simple example to show how medium influences the formed PHA. But in this case a well-defined substrate and a pure culture was used. This costs a lot of valuable material and pure culture processes need sterilization. It would be much simpler and cheaper for producers if there are cheap, useful media that are already rich in carbon with communities of bacteria making PHA. A medium like waste. Because of this, there is much research going on in making PHAs out of wastewater. For instance, malt wastewater, soya wastewater, but also paper mill wastewater. A recent study showed it is already quite feasible to produce polyhydroxyalkanoates by microbial enrichment in paper mill wastewater using an alternative strategy called microbial community engineering for enrichment of PHA producing biomass. This method requires no sterile substrate and selects PHA producing microorganisms for the natural environment instead of a certain type of model bacterium. So, 
instead of genetically engineering a high producing model bacteria for PHA, it is also possible to operate under feast famine conditions to enrich for PHA producing organisms. The feast Famine selection is based on natural selection and competition. As you already know, a PHA storing bacteria has the positive trait it can store carbon in a PHA granule. The better the bacteria can store carbon, the longer they can survive and grow without it. In feast famine conditions, the bacterial community is put in a carbon limited environment. A carbon substrate will be given for about one hour, which is called a feast. And after death, there will be a period of 11 hours without this substrate, the famine. In this way, the competition between the bacteria is based on substrate uptake. Bacteria with the highest substrate uptake rate can take up the most substrate in a short time, leaving less for other bacteria, and by storing this, survive the 11 hours of famine. With this feast famine selection, it was possible to create a community in paper mill wastewater that had just as high PHA product yields as genetically modified bacteria and could even produce PHA faster. So, what stops us? from using biodegradable plastics in large-scale production. Right now, the cost of the production of PHA is still much higher than the production costs of oil-based polymers. But there are a lot of promising researches going on right now to make the costs of PHA production lower. So, who knows? Perhaps there is a large-scale production possible within 10 years. Also, by that time we should pay attention to the carbon source we use as a medium. Just as with the discussion of biofuels, we should ask the question whether it's ethically responsible to use food as a carbon source and whether all waste can be used when for instance looking at toxics in waste. We think that in the bright ideal hopefully not too distant future bioplastics will play a great role in solving environmental problems. Thank you.